In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us and for being us uh, with us this glorious morning. It seems that our church, since we celebrated the Pentecost, there is the theme that going through all the Sundays that happen after Pentecost through the readings of the Gospel. After we celebrated Pentecost, when the apostles themselves received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and for each one of us received the gift of the Holy Spirit through our own baptisms, it seems that the church is trying to ingrain some important things about our calling of how to be Christians even 2,000 years after this event. So today, the theme that we heard from the reading of the Gospel is about our life and how we can relate even to the worries and the anxieties that all human beings may go through, but still even today we can relate to this even more after 2,000 years. In the Gospel, the Lord is talking about worrying about food and drink and, uh, um, and clothing. These are basic things. And even today, we continue to have the same anxieties, sometimes about different things. And it's perplexing that the basics of life are relatively, uh, re relatively available for all of us or for most of us today, but still we have similar anxieties and worries about life. It's perplexing because today's anxieties and mental illness and depression is not only for the adults who are responsible to provide for their families and to bring food and drink for their own families, but also we have successfully feeded anxieties to our own children and to our young people and adolescents. The Lord clearly is asking a rhetorical question through this gospel saying, isn't life more than what we drink and what we eat, isn't our life even more about who we are than our wearing and what clothes we put on? Clearly, we all, for this question, we will answer, yes, there's more to life than what we eat and drink, and there's more to our bodies than what we clothe ourselves with, but still, how many of us know people who are willing to uh, live their lives in order to eat and drink and to drive luxury cars or to buy the most um, luxurious stuff in their lives and show off here and there when they have the chance to do so. And in the midst of everything, they forget to live. Those people live to do those stuff and to show off, and they, in the midst of, of everything, they forget to live their own lives. If we all agree on one thing, we agree on that all our anxieties come from one thing. And the, the pandemic over the past 18 months at least has highlighted this. Our anxiety comes from our fear of death. It's not always manifesting through this fear. We don't always bring the fear of death in our front and we see it in our eyes all the times. But that fear manifests in other things in our lives. We sometimes fear that we are not loved, that we are not respected, that we are not appreciated enough. We sometimes fear that we will be dumped, and we sometimes fear that we, will, we are this, can be discarded easily from among those people who are around us and who love us. So we fear that we are disposable, and that our life is meaningless even to those who know us the best. And in sometimes, as a result of this fear, we act in a way that will reflect our fragmentation, our weaknesses, our darkness, and our brokenness in the way we perceive our lives and the world around us. So we become mean to those around us. We treat them with condescension. We brag about things that are peripheral to our life and who we are just to prove to those who are around us that we are important and they cannot live without us in their lives. All this, as I said, is a reflection of our broken understanding of who we are and why we are here and why we are created. The Gospel in the very beginning says, if your eye is the lamp of your entire body and your life, then that eye has to be sound 
and in the actual translation of the word, sound does not capture the whole meaning of the word in the original Greek. It is if your eye is simple. So if you have the eye that is sound and simple, your life would be totally different. And if your eye is fragmented and darkened and broken, then everything in your life is broken and is filled with anxiety. But how do we, what is the um, sound and simple eye and how we can acquire it even today? The simple answer for this is if we acquire the eye of God, if we perceive things the way God perceives them, then we have a simple and sound eye. Because simply put, God is the one who created us and he knows much more about us than we know about ourselves. So if we acquire his perception about our lives and our world, then we will have a better and simple and sound eye to live our life in peace. What is that simple perception? What is the basic thing about that perception for the world of, and, and our life? It's very simple because that's how God created us, that our lives are fragile and our life is a gift. And everything we have in our lives is a gift to us. I mentioned this before, that we sometimes fall for the gift and we forget about the gift giver, the one who gave the gift to us. And everything that we have as a gift, when we see this as a gift, then we remember our role is that we are stewards of these gifts. And everything that we are given, whether it's our talents, our time, our money, and everything we have, we have to use to transform the world that was transformed once and for all through the love and compassion and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. So unless we use our talents, whatever we have, our lives, to transform the world, then we don't have a true perception of our lives and the world around us. In the gospel today, the Lord is not saying that we should not eat or drink or wear decent clothes or try to acquire something for our lives or to work hard or to do what is in our best so that we can bring out children in a decent life. He's not saying that. He's actually highlighting the, the anxieties and worries that may come with our pursuit of decent life. And when anxiety is showing in our life, this means that our perception is broken and fragmented. The other thing that I want to highlight very quickly is that when God is saying that we should not be worried and we should not have anxieties, he's not condemning the person who has them. He is not coming after the victim and saying you should not have anxieties because you are wrong, you have done something wrong, you should change your life. His goal is to heal that person who has anxieties. So he's not attacking the victim, he's trying to help all of us to find the true perception of our life. So the responsibility is not on the person who is suffering from mental illness or anxieties or depression. The responsibility is on all of us as Christians because it's easy and you will see that we as Christians can easily fall prey into all the temptations in our lives. Rather than us being the salt, the light, the yeast of the world, we just walk with everyone else. We go with the stream of whatever is happening around us and we behave and live our lives as if we are just like another citizen in our countries. Rather than being counter-cultural in the sense that knowing why we are here is to transform the world, then our perception about our lives is different and we have the responsibility to transform the, Lord, the world that is our, around us. And rather than feeding our own anxieties to those around us, to our children, to the young people, because of how demanding we are about everything, and even our subordinates, the people who are less fortunate around us, we have to perceive them through the eyes of God, through His perception, through His mercy and compassion, so that transformation of the world might happen. 
So today's invitation to us to acquire the perception of God, to see the world and our life through His compassionate and merciful eyes. And our invitation is, as we heard in the last sentence of the Gospel, to seek first the Kingdom of God, to seek first the one who gave the gift, rather than to worry about the gift and how to sustain the gift. Because the one who gave the gift is able to sustain it. The issue is we worry so much about the gift that we forget that it's not ours in the first place. And as much as we seek the giver of the gift, then we will, own, we will acquire peace, not only for our lives, but also for the entire world that is fragmented, that is anxious around us, so that the goal of this world would be achieved, which is to make it a place for God to reign through His love and compassion and mercy. Amen.